In this video, I'll be walking you through everything there is for a layman to know about the working principle, the test process, and the technicalities involved in the much talked about rapid antigen test or RAT test for the SARS-CoV-2 virus or coronavirus, so make sure to watch till the end. The coronavirus or COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 rapid antigen test or RAT test is a qualitative cassette membrane-based lateral flow chromatographic immunoassay for the quick detection of the SARS-CoV-2 virus in the nasopharyngeal swab sample of an individual suspected of having COVID-19 infection. It is a qualitative test because the test result does not specify the quantity of virus present in the sample. It only lets you know whether the virus is absent or present in the sample. It is a cassette membrane-based test because the main test instrument is a strip of absorbent nitrocellulose housed within a plastic cassette enclosure. I'll explain in detail about the test device a bit later in the video. It is a lateral flow test because the test cassette is placed horizontally on a flat surface and the test sample is allowed to flow horizontally or laterally through the membrane of the test strip. This will also be explained in more detail as we move along. It is a chromatographic test because in the context of RAT test, the test result involves the production of a visible color in the form of one or more colored lines in the test strip. More on this a bit later. It is a immunoassay because the test or assay is based on an antigen-antibody reaction. We'll talk about the basics of antigens, antibodies and the immune system in just a moment. It is a quick test because the test results are typically ready in less than 30 minutes. It is a nasopharyngeal swab test because the sample to be tested for the coronavirus is taken from the nasopharyngeal region of the nose. Details on the location of the nasopharynx, including the reasons why a nasopharyngeal swab is used as test sample, will be explained very soon as we move along in the video. Before we go in detail into the steps involved in the RAT test for COVID-19, I'll briefly go through a simplified overview of the concepts that one need to know in order to fully understand the what, why, and how of the coronavirus RAT test. Make sure to not skip any part of this video and watch till the end because the knowledge that you'll gain from this short video will help you go a long way towards fully understanding the basics involved in this rapid diagnostic test for the SARS-CoV-2 virus that everybody is talking about. When a foreign particle such as bacteria or virus enters our body, the immune system or as I like to call it, the ministry of defense of our body starts producing certain chemical substances to help fight and destroy those foreign particles that cause harm to our body. These foreign particles are generally known as antigens, while the substances produced by the body to help fight and destroy these antigens are generally known as antibodies. The interaction or reaction between the antigens and antibodies is what is generally termed as immunological reaction or simply immune response. You've probably seen this depiction of the coronavirus a thousand times by now. A spherical ball with spiky projections all over. And this depiction is in fact based on the actual shape of the virus when seen under the electron microscope. Just like any virus, the coronavirus is also made up of proteins and a genetic material, in this case RNA. These structural proteins can act as antigens and trigger our body's immune system to produce the required antibodies to fight them back. Among the key structural proteins that make up the virus, the nucleocapsid protein is the most abundant protein and plays an important role in the multiplication of the virus within the cells of an infected person. The nucleocapsid proteins, as the name suggests, are always found associated with the RNA genetic material of the coronavirus. The nucleocapsid protein acts as an important antigen against which our immune system usually manufactures antibodies to fight the virus during infection. Due to their relative abundance, the nucleocapsid proteins present in nasal swab samples are used as the main viral antigen marker in rapid antigen tests.
The human body is made up of trillions of cells. On the surface of many of these cells is found a special type of protein called ACE2 or ACE2 receptor protein, which is short for angiotensin converting enzyme 2. This membrane protein plays a number of important roles in our body, such as in the control and regulation of blood pressure. However, in the context of coronavirus infection, the ACE2 receptor proteins act as the main entry point for the virus particles when they infect the various cells of our body. The spike proteins present on the surface of the virus binds perfectly to the ACE2 receptor proteins in pretty much the same way as a key being inserted into its corresponding lock. This binding allows the virus particles to enter the cells of the individual, and thus begins the infection process. In the rapid antigen test for COVID-19, the nasopharyngeal swab sample is most commonly used to detect the virus. The nasopharynx is the name given to the uppermost part of the pharynx located right behind the nasal cavity. The nasopharyngeal swab is a sample consisting of secretions and cells collected from the nasopharyngeal region using a nasal swab. The main reason why the nasopharyngeal swab is most commonly used to test COVID-19 is because the ACE2 receptor proteins that we've previously discussed are found in abundance in the cells present on the surface or lining of the upper respiratory tract, and that includes the nasopharynx. And since the ACE2 receptors are the virus's main entry point into the cells, it is only natural that the viral population in the upper respiratory passage will be significantly high in an infected individual, especially during the peak of infection. The COVID-19 rapid antigen test is based on the principle that when a nasopharyngeal swab sample containing the viral nucleocapsid protein antigen is added to the sample pad of the RAT test cassette, an antigen-antibody reaction occurs between the viral antigen from the sample and the corresponding antiviral antibody which is coated in the nitrocellulose membrane of the test cassette. The end result is the formation or lack of formation of a colored band on the test strip depending on whether the virus is present or absent in the sample. The two most important components in a typical RAT test kit are the tube containing the viral extraction buffer or viral lysis buffer and the test cassette. The extraction buffer, also known as the viral lysis buffer, is a special liquid chemical substance used to extract the viral particles from the nasopharyngeal swab soon after the sample collection. This buffer solution breaks open the membrane coat of the viral particles if present in the sample and extracts the viral antigen proteins, especially the nucleocapsid proteins present within the viral envelope that we have previously discussed. These nucleocapsid proteins are the viral antigens that we'll be detecting through the RAT test. The buffer solution also helps to stabilize the extracted antigen proteins so they do not get destroyed or disintegrate before the test is performed. The nasopharyngeal swab sample after treatment with the extraction buffer is known as a sample extract. The second most important component of the COVID-19 RAT test kit is the test cassette. This tiny device is basically a strip of absorbent nitrocellulose membrane housed within a plastic cassette enclosure. The nitrocellulose membrane within the test cassette has the following important regions. A sample port containing the sample pad, conjugate pad, test or T line, control or C line, and finally the wicking pad. The sample pad is where the test sample extract is to be loaded on the test cassette. The conjugate pad, which normally lies hidden beneath the plastic covering, is probably the most crucial part of the test strip. The conjugate pad is pre-coated with primary antibodies that are bound together with special colored substances called detector molecules. These primary antibodies are specially designed in the lab such that they react exclusively with the viral antigens present in the test sample extract to form an antigen-antibody colored complex. The test or T-line, also just like the conjugate pad, contains specially designed antibodies that can react specifically with the viral antigens present in the extracted test sample. However, the antibodies present in the test line are not coated with coloring substances. 
The control or C line contains specially designed secondary antibodies that are, however, not specific to the viral antigens present in the test sample. They simply capture the remaining surplus or extra primary colored antibodies from the conjugate pad that were not captured by the antibodies in the test line. Remember that secondary antibodies bind to primary antibodies regardless of whether or not the primary antibody is bound to the viral antigen. The only function of the control line is to ensure that the test is performed properly using an adequate amount of the liquid test sample and there is a proper flow of the sample throughout the nitrocellulose membrane strip. If colored primary antibodies from the conjugate pad are able to reach the secondary antibodies in the control line to form a colored band, then one can be fairly sure that the necessary antigen-antibody interaction would have taken place in the test line, thus implying that the test result is reliable and valid. The test and control lines are both invisible before the test is performed. The weakening pad is made of absorbent cellulose material and performs the main function of driving the capillary movement of the sample extract across the nitrocellulose test membrane. The pad with its high absorption capacity also functions as a reservoir of the waste liquid that has flowed beyond the margin of the nitrocellulose membrane strip and also prevents backflow of the same. So how this test cassette works is that when a sufficient amount of the test sample extract containing the viral antigens is added to the sample pad, the liquid extract travels along the absorbent test membrane and first reaches the conjugate pad. Here, the antigens in the test sample will interact with most of the colored primary antibodies present in the conjugate pad to form an antibody-antigen complex. This complex mixture then travels further. When the mixture reaches the test or T line, the colored antigen antibody complex from the conjugate pad will further interact with the antibodies present in the test line via the antigen particles already bound to the primary antibodies coming from the conjugate pad. This interaction or clustering results in a dense concentration of the colored antigen antibody complex particles at the T line, which then appears as a distinct purple colored band visible to the unaided eyes. The remaining colored primary antibodies from the conjugate path that were not captured by the antibodies at the test line will travel further. Once they reach the control line, they are captured by the secondary antibodies. And since the secondary antibodies are not specific to the viral antigens, therefore regardless of whether or not the primary antibodies contain viral antigens bound to them, they will inevitably be captured by the secondary antibodies at the control line again resulting in a dense concentration of colored antibodies at the control line. This leads to the formation of a second colored band at the control line. Excess liquid from the test extract finally reaches the wicking pad and deposits all residual molecules there. If the test sample extract does not contain viral antigens, then there will be no antigen-antibody complex formation at the conjugate pad or the test line. Therefore, a distinct colored band will fail to form at the test line. However, if the test is performed correctly with an adequate amount of sample used, then a colored band will still form at the control line. The reason has already been explained previously. Now that we know the in-depth theory behind the COVID-19 RAT test, we now come to the step-by-step -step COVID-19 RAT testing process. Follow all necessary precautions and wear protective equipment before you perform the test. A typical RAT test kit has the following contents. A RAT test cassette or test strip sealed in a plastic pouch. A mixing tube containing a few milliliters of viral extraction or lysis buffer liquid a nozzle cap, and a sterile nasal swab stick, typically made of plastic with a fine cotton brush at one tip packed in a sterile pouch. To begin the RAT test for SARS-CoV-2 virus, open the pouch containing the sterile nasal swab stick. Make sure to follow the instruction on the pouch and open it from the side containing the end of the swab stick handle and not from the side containing the cotton tip. Carefully remove the swab stick from the pouch. Also, open and remove the foil covering of the extraction tube. Keep this aside. Also, remove the test cassette from its sealed pouch.
Now holding the nasal swapstick handle with the thumb and index finger, insert it carefully through one of the nostrils of the patient and into the nasopharyngeal region of the nasal cavity. Once the cotton tip of the swapstick reaches the very end of the nasopharynx, carefully rotate the stick in a semicircular motion repeatedly clockwise then anti-clockwise for about five times then gently but quickly remove the swap stick from the nasal cavity entirely immediately dip the cotton tip of the stick into the extraction buffer liquid and gently agitate the buffer in circular motion about five times now squeeze the plastic tube just below the mouth and forcefully pull off the swap stick in order to extract as much residual liquid from the cotton tip into the buffer tube as possible. Now tightly cover the tube with the nozzle cap provided and then gently mix the contents of the tube for a few seconds. Without any delay, add 3 to 4 drops of the extracted specimen from the buffer tube onto the specimen loading chamber of the test cassette. Leave the cassette undisturbed for a few minutes. You will notice the liquid sample begin to travel along the entire length of the nitrocellulose membrane of the test strip. Make your final observations at the end of 5 to 10 minutes. In the case of a sample that tests positive for COVID-19, two distinct purple lines appear on the spots labeled as test or T and control or C on the test cassette. As long as a purple line shows on the test spot, no matter how faint, is typically considered as positive test. In the case of a negative test for COVID-19, only the control or C spot shows a single purple line. A purple line showing only on the test or T spot but not on the control or C spot is considered as an invalid test. Hope you liked this video and learned a thing or two about the basic working principle of COVID-19 rapid antigen test and how the test is performed. Do show your support and subscribe for more related content. Thanks for watching.